Now we compare briefly the veins and arteries and capillaries. Veins, this is minimum pressure. At least in, uh, in, in major veins, the pressure is almost negligible. Veins have to collect blood from the body and return it to the heart. They also have to flow against the gravitational pull. And this is very important. Number one, they have less pressure, reduced pressure. Secondly, uh, they are returning blood maybe from the legs, from the feet to the heart. They are moving, the blood is moving, the fl blood flow is against the gravitational pull. Uh, so, there is a more problem in uh, movement of blood through the uh, vessels toward heart. The, the arteries faces maximum pressure. They have to distribute blood. Blood is pumped by the heart, so it is uh, having high pressure. So, they are thick walled and veins are thin walled. Arteries don't need any walls. Veins need valves to regulate the blood flow. Capillaries have to exchange materials with the tissues. So, they are simply one cell thick and very, very small. Now, we look at the importance of valves in the veins. Let us have a look on the diagram. In the center, a vein is shown. Most of the major veins, the larger veins, have valves inside because pressure is reduced. Secondly, for example, from our leg towards our heart, when blood is flowing with low pressure and with a um, wider uh, lumen of the um, vein, there is a problem in returning that. How it occur? Our muscles, group of muscles, help them. There are groups of muscles surrounding these veins which contract and relax at intervals to push the blood towards the heart. Now, if the, when, the, when a group of muscle contract, blood goes up. But because pressure is low, when the muscles relax, it could flow back. These valves stop that backflow. When a group of muscles contract, a s blood goes up, then walls are open and allow the blood to go up. When the muscles relax, these valves closes. When they closes, they prevent the backflow of the blood downwards. Then comes the next valves and the next set of muscles which contracts and uh, the blood goes from um, that portion to the next portion and then its walls also close. This process continues um, until the, uh, the blood reaches heart. And in an abdominal area where there are larger veins, very large veins, um, the movement of uh, our uh, abdomen and the, uh, and the thorax due to the respiratory movements also help uh, pushing this blood towards the heart to the inferior vena cava, which is a major vein, which is returning blood to the heart. So this was the important importance of these valves present inside the vein. They, ha they actually stop the backflow of blood uh, inside the vein. Now we are going to talk about the main arteries and veins inside the human arterial and venous system. In human arterial and venous system, there are a lot many uh, arteries, veins, capillaries. We will talk about only the major ones. Let's have a look on a diagram. The diagram in front of you is showing you the major circulatory vessels inside a human body. The diagram, if, if we divide these di this diagram um, and the vessels into two major parts, then it will be easier to understand. We can see in the red all the arteries because the arteries have oxygenated blood. We can simply uh, say the veins are in blue because veins have deoxygenated blood. We start with the arteries. Arteries, as you can observe here, that from the heart, one major artery is arising. This is called aorta, aortic arc. This aorta just going ahead and making an arch. We call it aortic arch. Blood, when, when blood is pushed by the heart, it is pushed into the aorta. You send it towards the body. From aorta, we can see that on the top, various branches, branching, uh, branches are arising. These branches are giving blood to the head and neck region and also to the shoulders and the arms. You can see uh, on the top, 
two uh, major uh, arteries going towards the head and neck called carotids. Carotids arteries are uh, taking blood from the aorta and giving it to the head and neck region. Then you can see the subclavian artery. Subclavian artery is giving blood to the shoulders and then it is going towards arms to make the brachial artery. Brachial artery is giving blood to the arms. Then this is the um, head, neck and shoulders and arms. Now we go down. The aortic arch goes down by turning downwards and making a very large vessel down there. Uh, it runs actually towards the dorsal side of the body. So we call it dorsal aorta. Dorsal aorta distribute blood to all the other organs of the body. That is other than head, neck, shoulders and arms. As you can see, just below the heart, uh, this artery is giving a branch to the liver. This is called hepatic artery. Hepatic, something related to liver. Then on the other side, just uh, some way down, it is giving an artery to the kidneys. This is called renal artery. Renal means something related to kidney. That is renal artery, artery going towards kidneys. Slightly goes down, we can see that there is an artery going towards the gonads. This is called gonadal artery. Going something more down, there is an artery called celiac artery, which is divided into more branches. Uh, and a mesenteric artery. These arteries are giving blood to the digestive systems, digestive system organs, the intestines, the stomach. And uh, this is also giving blood to the mesenteries, the membranes which are present inside the abdominal cavity. Then this is going down. The dorsal aorta is divided into two major vessels on the, called the iliacs. Iliac arteries are giving blood towards the leg. This artery is further going down to make the femoral arteries. Femoral arteries give blood to the lower parts of the leg, that is knee, calf and the foot. Now we talk about the veins. Veins have to return blood to the heart. We again divide it into two parts, from the upper parts of the body, the head, neck and shoulders and arms, and the lower part of the body, legs and the lower organ. From the head, uh, you can see that there is a jugular vein. We call it jugular vein, which is returning blood from the head and neck region to the uh, major vessel. Actually, there are two major uh, veins which are returning blood to the heart. One is called superior vena cava and the other is called inferior vena cava. Superior vena cava is returning blood from the head, neck, shoulders and arms back to the heart. While inferior vena cava, as you can see in the diagram, that this is giving, uh, this is um, uh, taking blood from all the other organs, the lower organs and the legs um, and uh, giving this blood to the heart. So superior vena cava receives uh, the jugular vein from the head and neck, receives the subclavian vein from the um, uh, arms and the shoulders and if we go down a hepatic and uh, the, if we go down to the inferior vena cava, then it is receiving a vein from the uh, liver hepatic vein, from the gonads, uh, the gonadal veins, the iliacs called the iliac veins and uh, then femoral, the femoral veins from the uh, knee, calf and feet and the iliac veins towards from the legs. These are the major, major uh, blood vessels of a human uh, circulatory system. Uh, I simply uh, say aorta which is the major vessel uh, the major artery which is receiving blood directly from the heart and sending it towards the body and the superior and inferior vena cava which are returning blood from the body towards the heart. And then aorta makes branches towards uh, head, neck and shoulders and arms and then it makes, uh, it uh, gives away lower branches towards the uh, visceral organs of the body and to the legs. Um, and superior vena cava receives blood from head, neck arms and shoulders and inferior vena cava receives blood from all the other organs. Um, heart itself have circulation which is called coronary circulation. Heart also receives um, arteries uh, which have to give uh, blood or of course distribute nutrients and oxygen and everything to the tissues of the heart itself. These are called coronary arteries. Then these distribute and convert it to 
coronary veins and then gives back to the uh, give back blood to the vena cava these coronary arteries and veins are very important because if sometimes any coronary artery or vein is, artery is particularly is blocked then the result may be a quick death of the tissues of the heart which may result in a myocardial infarction that is serious disease uh, which may causes even death of the patient so these were uh, the major uh, arteries and veins of the um, human circulatory system one thing more that there is only one artery and there is only one vein which have uh, uh, opposite to the normal oxygenated and deoxygenated situation the pulmonary vein actually have oxygenated blood because it is coming from the lungs back to the heart and the pulmonary artery uh, have the uh, deoxygenated blood because it is actually taking blood from the heart and giving it to the lungs so we can say that um, there is only one artery uh, pulmonary artery which have deoxygenated blood and uh, there is only one vein the pulmonary vein which have oxygenated blood opposite to the normal situation that is arteries have oxygenated blood and the veins have deoxygenated blood 